Ready? I was born ready. I'm Ron Swanson. Ron Swanson is a man with an incredible work ethic, or at least he is when he isn't doing his actual job for the government. As a result, he's amassed himself a small fortune consisting mainly of gold. Because of this, today we're finally talking about how much Ron Swanson is worth. Ron Swanson began his working life in 1971 at the ripe young age of 9. In Season 2's episode The Camel, Ron mentions that he began working in a sheet metal factory and... In two weeks, I was running the floor. Child labor laws are ruining this country. So that seems like a good place to start. The average floor worker in 1971 made $3.57 per hour. While scouring the internet, I was unable to find exactly how much a floor manager would have made back then, so what I decided to do is to compare how much an average worker today makes compared to a floor manager, around 65.03%, and use that percentage to extrapolate just how much he would have made as a child manager. So if the average worker was making just $3.57 per hour, an average manager would be making $5.49 per hour. Now because Ron was only a child at this point, he was also likely going to school full time. This leads me to believe that he would only be able to work part time at the sheet metal factory. On average, a part time worker works 20 hours a week, and considering that he was a child worker, he would be paid under the table, which means all the money he is making is completely tax free. At the rate he would be working, given how much he would be making, his annual salary would be $5,709.36. We also know that throughout the series, Ron talks a lot about having vast amounts of gold. So we'll assume that Ron is heavily investing in gold from a very early age. Considering that he is indeed a child, Ron would likely have virtually no expenses. So we'll assume that child Ron is investing 95% of his annual salary into gold, saving 5% for whatever it is a young Ron Swanson would do. So for the next two years, Ron would be heavily investing most of his money into gold, getting 121.61 ounces in 1971 and 84.96 ounces in 72. We also hear Ron mention later on in the series that for a short period when he was 11, he was offered a job working with leather. But while trying to do both jobs and school, this left him incredibly overworked. So we can assume that Ron worked there for a very short time, just long enough to get one paycheck. So we'll add that onto Ron's total amount in 1973, that gives him 55.52 ounces that year. In prom, we hear Ron mention that he actually attended prom himself when he was 12 years old. We slow danced to a Merle Haggard song, and then I left early to go to my shift at the quarry. I was 12 years old. Never went again. Felt like I had outgrown it. At this point, Ron has shown that he's unable to work two jobs at the same time while also attending school, so we can look at this handy dandy sheet that I found and used to find Ron's original salary at the sheet metal factory, and we can see that the average mining salary in 1974 is $521. This gives him a salary of $5,418 and $5,147.12 to invest annually in gold. So from 12 to 14, he would be investing in gold normally, and he would get 31.67 ounces in 1974, 36.95 ounces in 1975, and 38.48 ounces in 1976. Now in 1977, something important happens in young Ron Swanson's life. He moves in with the woman who would become his first wife, Tammy Wan. Tammy Wan, as we know, is much older and has a more stable job than Ron. Because of this, I believe that Ron would still be able to invest 50% of his paycheck from the quarry into gold. So going off those numbers for the next few years, Ron gets 15.97 ounces of gold in 77, 12.37 in 78, and 6.67 ounces in 1979. In 1980, Ron would graduate high school. While he wanted to go to college, his father dropped him off in a metal plant on his 18th birthday, which is July 4th. Ron decides to hitchhike his way to college where he eventually gets his degree. That statement is very important and proves a couple things. One, that Ron only works at the quarry for half a year in 1980 before going to college. Two, that Ron never actually owns a car. His father drops him off and he hitchhikes his way to college. The only other time we hear of a young Ron Swanson driving is when Tammy Wan threw him a surprise birthday party. He could very easily be driving Tammy Wan's car. And most importantly, that Ron and Tammy Wan are already divorced at this time. If they were still together in any capacity, Ron could have just got a hold of her somehow and asked that she drop him off at college, or he could have even just driven her car to work. So since Ron only works half a year in 1980, he would get an additional 2.16 ounces of gold for that year. So Ron's total pre-college gold count comes out to a whopping 420.1 troy ounces of gold. Considering that Ron's father didn't want him to go to college, it's a safe bet that Ron probably paid his own way through. I was able to find this handy sheet through the magic google machine that has the average cost of a public college per year. So what I did for the next 4 years of Ron's life was convert his total gold into money, subtract the cost per year, and convert it back. 
This way I was able to see just how much gold Ron would need to spend per year, considering that he wasn't working. Because, as Ron likes to say, Never half-ass two things. Whole ass one thing. After doing that math for the four years it would take Ron to graduate, Ron leaves college with a total of 369.45 ounces. We don't hear much of Ron's life between college and when the show actually starts, so for the sake of this video, we'll assume that upon graduation, he immediately begins working at the Parks Department. Obviously, he isn't automatically the Park Department's director, he would likely start in a position similar to Leslie's, just with a significant lack of get up and go. We once again do the very same extrapolation math that we did to find out Ron's childhood salary to find his starting park salary, which after tax withholding comes out to $18,950 per year. So for Ron's foreseeable future, we can assume that he's putting 20% of his income into gold and 5% into a bank account that we know he has thanks to Tammy One's appearance. We'll also take into consideration average cost of living adjustments that he'd be getting each year and some different expenses. So if Ron were to work at the Parks Department for several years, from 1984 to 1990 without any major purchases, he would come out with an additional 75.31 ounces of gold and $8,352.50 in a bank account. We know that at some point, Ron buys a house. Today, it's more common for someone to buy a house around age 30, but this was nearly 30 years ago, where it's slightly easier to buy a house. For this reason, in my math, I have Ron buying a home in 1990. The average price for a home in 1990 was $68,900. Considering the fact this will be the first home he buys, he would be able to get a first-time buyer's loan and thus get away with only paying 3.5% down on it. That would come out to Ron paying $2,411.50 for his down payment and the rest would come out of the 75% that he isn't saving per year. So the trend of how much he's making and saving would continue up until the year 2000, where things become a little more complicated. We know that eventually Ron takes up the mantle of Duke Silver. And we know that he plays one show a month at Cozy's in Eagleton. We know he is somewhat popular considering that every time we see him playing in a bar it's very crowded and that April's parents own his records and recognize him. But we also know his popularity is very localized because no one at the parks department and most people in Pawnee don't seem to recognize him. Considering that April recognizes him, she likely grew up listening to his records. If he began playing in 2000, April would have been around 11 years old, just young enough to be pretty impressionable. We also know that there are two other musicians that Duke Silver plays with and with whom he would split any profits. Going off of this, before he releases any albums, he would be making around $3,000 per year and will add $200 per year for each album he releases. He would likely invest some of this in gold, some of this into his bank account, and some he would use for instrument upkeep and general band stuff. So we'll do a 60-20-20 split with 60% going into gold. On another note, 2000 would be the ideal year for Ron to buy his workshop. He has enough money saved up that he doesn't need to dig up and use any of his gold. An average building roughly the size of Ron's workshop today would go for around $250,000. Building values back in 2000 were 43.1% of what they are today. That means Ron's workshop would cost him a little over $100,000. But when we see the workshop and its many code violations, it's safe to say that he got it for $100,000 on the nose. If he were to pay 20% of that upfront, he would be paying $20,000 out of his bank account, which would leave him $3,136 going into 2001. We can also assume that Ron sells just enough from his workshop to pay off his loans, considering that we only really see him selling things every so often, like when he sells flutes to the reasonableists. Praise be to Zorp. 2001 would be another big year for Ron. Most men get remarried at age 39, and we know that Ron has to both marry and divorce Tammy too before Leslie starts. Every time we've seen Ron get married in the show, it wasn't a big deal. They just go down to the courthouse, so it wouldn't be a surprise if that's all that were to happen. Coming out of 2001, Rob would have $5,368.11 at his bank account and an additional 263.77 ounces of gold made from his time at the Parks Department so far. 2002 would be a change for Ron. For one thing, we know this is the year where he becomes the Parks Department's director. While it's never given an exact date in the show, Leslie mentions in Season 7 that she gave Ron a Claymore 10 years ago on your 5th anniversary of becoming Parks Director. While the episode itself airs in 2015, it actually takes place in the far off futuristic year of 2017. So 15 years prior to that would be 2002. A man with Ron's education and experience in the Parks Department and given the size of Pawnee, the 7th largest city in Indiana, Ron would likely be making around $60,000 per year before taxes, or $45,018 after. Ron would also divorce Tammy Two in 2002. We know that Tammy Two cheated on Ron at some point and they divorced. We also know they divorced before Leslie starts at the Parks Department because she's never actually met her at the start of the series and the fact that most affairs take place within the first two years of marriage. We can also find via Google that DIY divorces on average cost around $300 to $1800. 
With what we know about Tammy too, she would most likely try and make it as difficult as possible, so we'll assume the higher end of 1800. And since Tammy too cheated on him, and they make a relatively similar amount because they both work in local government, he would likely be able to get off with little to no alimony. It also makes sense for Ron to invest in his decoy gold at this point, considering that Tammy too would likely be going after it. Online, a 35 ounce piece of fake gold costs $18.47. So here's where it gets a little tricky. Gold is typically weighed in troy ounces as opposed to regular ounces. While they weigh relatively similarly, 633.22 troy ounces comes out to 694.73 regular ounces. Getting enough gold to weigh the same comes out to $374.80, which we'll take out of his bank account as well. So getting out of 2002, Ron has $6,108.88 in his bank account. The next few years go by relatively easily, essentially until 2011, when Ron and Tammy too get remarried and divorce again. So we'll take another 1800 off of his total for that year, and then we pass by quickly again until 2015, when Ron quits the parks department and creates his very successful company, very good building company. The average CEO of a successful small construction company makes $148,500. We know that Ron's company is pretty successful, considering they have their own building and landed the contract to build an apartment building where Ann's house used to be. So for the last two years we're doing, he'll have that salary and we'll take the amount he's investing in gold up to 30%. So for the next few years it goes that way until we reach the end of 2017, where we'll end our math, because the show jumps into the future and we don't quite know the price of gold yet. One thing to mention before we get to our final tallery, and no, it's not a Patreon promotion, that comes after the video. So there's a mention of Ron having several cabins throughout the series, but when this is brought up in court during the trial of Leslie Nope, he's very vehemently against the court knowing about it. Can you confirm that you own a cabin at 930? Ah! Stop, please. I don't like to give out my address to anyone, much less have it on an official record. But if Ron had bought the land or cabin, the government would already know. Because of this, I think Ron is either going out in the woods and just building cabins somewhere, or he's building them on some kind of family property. Thus, I'll be leaving them out of the final tally. So now for the moment of truth. By adding up his gold totals, which is 935.96 ounces, or $1,185,159.35, the price of what his house would be worth today, $137,511.21, how much he has in his bank account, $66,812.63, and how much his workshop would be worth today, $250,000 which means that Ron Swanson is worth $1,639,483.19, which truthfully seems kind of low, but hey. Anyways, this has been 10K Bill, and guess what? I can't put ads on my YouTube videos. What does that mean? Well, that means that I can't really ever do this for a living, which was basically what I figured would be the case anyways. Anyways, because of YouTube not wanting to run ads, I started a Patreon account. If you want to see more videos like this, want your name at the end of these, or even want your own channel or anything shouted out, considering checking that out. The link will be down below. And hey, while you're down there, comment what you'd like to hear me talk about next, and make sure to subscribe for all your entertainment-related content.